G'day legends, welcome back to ABCPE, the site where we try and make VCPE as easy as ABC. Tonight we're going to have a look at levers. This is one that some people have a little bit of trouble with, so hopefully this helps. Alright, let's start. What is a lever? It is something that allows us to increase the amount of force we can put on an object or the amount of speed we can put on an object. It's a rigid bar, so for example, this guy here is not strong enough to move this truck just by himself. So what he'll do is he'll make a lever which has an axis, a resistance and a force that will enable him then to help move that car because it's increased the amount of force. He's not gotten stronger, but this lever has allowed him to amplify that force he can put on this car. You must know that Axis is the point of rotation, the resistance is what we're trying to move, and the force is the push or the pull or the effort that we put in to that lever. You will have to be able to classify each of the levers, and how we do that is why where the axis is in relation to the force and the resistance. So the simplest place to start is a seesaw as a first class lever, axis in the middle. But how VCAR more likely going to ask you a question? Well, where on the body can we find a first class lever? And the answer is the axis and the um, axis and atlas vertebrae. So C1 and C2, when we are nodding. So in here, the force is the muscles of the neck, the axis is the, the vertebrae, and the resistance is moving our head up. We're rotating around that axis. How we remember what a second class lever is, we want to know that a second class lever will amplify the force we can put on something. So we say a real fight requires force. Axis, resistance, force. A real fight, axis, resistance, force. Best example of a second class lever we think is a wheelbarrow, where we have the resistance in between the axis and the force. So a real fight requires force so this must be a second class lever it'll help us move more dirt than what we could without that wheelbarrow in the body we've got um, remember the resistance is measured through the center of gravity of what we're trying to move in this case we're trying to move the body so the center of gravity would be coming straight through the middle of this body so it'd be somewhere around here axis is the toes the force that's allowing us to do that calf raise is our calf muscle. So that is an example in the body of a second class lever. What we're most interested in are these third class levers. Third class levers help to amplify the velocity that we can put on an object. Therefore, we, we classify third class levers this way. A foot race requires speed. So the force is in between the axis and the resistance, A, F, R. A foot race requires speed, so this must be a third class lever. If we're looking at Taylor Harris, we've got axis being the hip, uh, the force being this quad, and then the resistance being the foot, which will then impart that force onto the ball. Um, in here, and this, this can confuse some people, remember the force is measured from this attachment on the bone, the, the resistance measured through um, the center of gravity of the weight that we're trying to move. So bicep curl, upward phase, axis here, force, going up through the bicep, and the resistance is that weight. So third class lever. Okay, the other thing we need you to know about levers is this thing called mechanical advantage. By definition, mechanical advantage is the amount by which a lever amplifies the force, and the equation for it is force arm over resistance arm. Okay, so what does this mean? Basically, mechanical advantage is your rating scale. How good is this lever and in particular how well does it amplify the force but what what's the force arm what's the resistance arm well every lever has three parts this is the axis in this case this person is the resistance and this girl's going to apply a force so we've we've classified our lever we've got our axis our force and resistance and now we need to know that the force arm is the distance between force an axis and our resistance arm is the distance between resistance and axis so in this case of a seesaw well the force arm let's just say about one meter and the resistance arm is also about 
one metre. So this mechanical advantage of a seesaw is one over one, which equals one. Now, the things that get a little bit trickier is um, once we get further above one, so here's your seesaw example in terms of mechanical advantage. As we get further above one, this is the second class levers. These levers are better at amplifying force. So if we've got a lever all the way up here on this rating scale, then it's probably like a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow is a second class lever that's really good at amplifying the force. And it has a force arm that's a lot longer than the resistance arm. Now, a uh, bottle opener, still a second class lever, but it's, it's not as good at amplifying the force as a wheelbarrow because the force arm's not as long. And then conversely, we go further down this way and then we can think about, well, if I'm just throwing a tennis ball, because I've got a longer resistance arm than a force arm, that means that my mechanical advantage is still gonna be below one. But if I can increase my resistance arm by putting something like a tennis racket in it, my mechanical advantage is gonna be even further below one, which means that lever is now better at amplifying speed. Both the throw and the tennis serve will amplify the speed. Both are gonna have mechanical advantage of less than one, but the tennis racket's gonna go faster because it's further below one in terms of mechanical advantage. Let's put this into practice a little bit. So here we have Layla. She's got in two different scenarios. She's got a dog thrower and she's holding nothing. In both cases, let's classify the lever. We've got an axis, which we're gonna use as her shoulder. It could be multi-axial, we could use elbow, we could use wrist, but we're gonna use shoulder in this case. So the force that's moving that shoulder is where the muscles in our back attached to our forearm. So that's gonna be the force, that's the effort. So in both of these cases, Axis, the distance from force to axis, which is the force arm, is exactly the same. Remember, mechanical advantage is force arm over resistance arm. In these two cases, well, the force arm's exactly the same. But what's the difference? In this case, we're using a dog thrower, so we've increased our resistance arm. We've increased the distance from axis to resistance. This means we have increased our mechanical advantage, which means Layla over here, mechanical advantage still below one, but now using a dog thrower, it's well further below one. And what's that gonna mean to her throw? Well, let's have a look. So in this case, we have Layla just with, obviously without the dog thrower, so the resistance arm is smaller, which means the mechanical advantage is closer to one, which means the throw doesn't go super fast. So now we compare that throw to this one where she's got the dog thrower, which means she's got an increased resistance arm. That means that she should, bit of a misfire there have a greater range of motion, leaning to a greater velocity at the end of that dog thrower, which is imparted onto the ball, which hopefully you could see the ball went faster. Okay, let's put this into action. This was last year's VCAR exam. Hopefully you can get part I correct. That is a third class lever. Now part II, that's a little bit trickier. But again, follow that D principle, D for definition. In this case, Mechanical advantage the amount by which a lever amplifies the force. We know it's got an equation, force arm over resistance arm. That is the way to start all your biomechanical answers. The explanation, that's the hard bit. The lacrosse trick being a third class lever has a mechanical advantage exactly the same as Layla and her dog thrower. The mechanical advantage is below one. The greater means the lacrosse trick is gonna have a greater range of motion meaning greater velocity on the ball. Why is this important? The performance link, we can throw that ball faster and in lacrosse means we're more likely to score, less likely to get intercepted, or whatever it might be. So we have a look at the VCAR examiner's report. 
77% of the state could get there was a third class lever. 18% of the state could get that three out of three. Um, and this is what we're looking for. Longer resistance arm, less than one mechanical advantage, greater range of motion, greater velocity on the ball. All right, guys, hopefully that helped make things as easy as ABC. We've got heaps of other videos on our website. I'll keep updating them throughout the, the year, but hopefully this is helpful. Um, if there is a video that you want us to make in particular, just shoot us a message or comment on our videos and we will get onto that quickly. Thanks for your support, guys. Good luck. Cheers.